I did a video where I repaired this Kenwood radio, and the interesting part was that it used a, a, a Toshiba module. It used an S-AV17 65-watt uh, module, and uh, people were interested in knowing how that module actually works. The video was just my repair. This video will be about looking at the uh, schematic of that uh, of that module and comparing it to other final amplifiers and radios and uh, seeing how it works. So let's take a look at the uh, amplifier here. Uh, we have two transistors. We have a drive transistor and a final output transistor. And these uh, two transistors are the whole amplifier. Okay, that's all it is. They're both NPN transistors. So the ground lead comes in here. All right, so this is a ground. So the emitters of these two transistors are grounded. All right, so that's how ground gets put in. And then um, five volts comes in at five volts. 13.8 volts comes in here, all right? So the way these transistors are biased is this 13.8 uh, this, uh, volts goes through a inductor to the collector of, of each of the... Uh, each of the two transistors. So that's how that's how they're biased on. Normally we would draw this a different way, but but they like to draw them this way and, and we'll keep it this way because there's a different schematic we'll be taking a look at this drawn the same way. So the data the data path, the uh, RF path is uh, here, capacitively coupled. Uh, there's a capacitor to ground for some impedance matching. Then it goes into um, some inductors, again, for impedance matching. So this is an L network coming in, or maybe even kind of a weird Pi thing. Anyway, comes into this transistor. It gets amplified. It's going to go through this way. It's going to get amplified a second time. It's going to go uh, this away. And then it actually follows this path. It goes through a low-pass filter. And then after the low-pass filter, it goes out to the antenna. Okay, so this is this is the antenna. So that's the that's the path. All right. So uh, we can look at a couple things here. Uh, obviously, there's some capacitors, some inductors. There's impedance matching impedance matching inductors along the way. Um, <clears throat> and there's impedance matching capacitors along the way. Um, and so I think it's pretty easy to see how this one works. This this emitter is tied to ground, so if there's a positive voltage out here, this transistor is starting to turn on. If if there's a positive voltage here, this transistor is turn, turning on. Now, we don't have to worry about biasing so much in this type of amplifier because it's FM. So an FM signal is has no up and down modulation. It just has side to side modulation. Okay. So that means that the power is constant and the frequency moves up and down. So you don't need to be in a linear region of these of these transistors. You just need to have them amplifying. So I, these are probably something like a class C amplifier or something like that. All right. So that's the way this one works. Now let's uh, let's keep this in mind and uh, take a look at the uh, um, photograph of the actual amplifier. So here's the uh, amplifier, and it's kind of, uh, we were going left to right last time. We're going to be going right to left this time. So the input comes into here. Uh, it goes through a uh, inductor, and then it goes into the first transistor, which is right here. Then it goes through another inductor and a capacitor, and then it makes it over to this section where the second, second uh, transistor is. This is the second transistor, and then it goes out. And it goes through some um, uh, inductors and capacitors here. And then when it's done, it goes through a low-pass filter, which is here. And then it goes out. All right. There's a little uh, SWR bridge here, but um, we can ignore that. So this is the amplifier. This is the, the drive section over here and the, drive, the final amplifier here. And then, and then it goes out, right? And so um, it has a lot of components, right? And it takes up, it takes up some space. So be nice to buy a module that does this all. So that's what we're going to take a look at next. All right, this is the schematic of the Toshiba um, module. And it also has uh, two transistors. It also has an output uh, filter. 
It also has um, power coming in through through an inductor to the uh, collector of the two transistors. So these these little uh, squares here kind of denote inductors in a PC board layout type of thing, right? And so as we come into this thing, the path comes in. There's a capacitor, an inductor, a capacitor, an inductor, a capacitor, and then it makes it to the first transistor, and then it comes out. There's an inductor, capacitor, inductor, comes out, and then an inductor, inductor, inductors. And you can see that um, the two circuits are basically identical. There's really very little difference between, between the two circuits. Um, but this one sort of does some RF magic on the PC board, so we'll take a look at that. So uh, here's a module. Um, you can see that it's a nice nice thing. You just bolt in and 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 you're done, right? You don't have to build all those transistors and everything. It's all it's all a little single unit, which is nice. Uh, so here's uh, the left hand side of the circuit. Um, I couldn't fit the whole thing on one picture, but uh, let's take a look at this. Um, let's take a look at the path. So the the RF comes in down here. And then it's going to follow this trace here. And it's going to come around. And it's going to come down. Now, what was the first thing we had in the other radio? We had a capacitor to ground. Here's a capacitor to ground. This long lead here is kind of like an inductor. And then there's another capacitor. And then it makes into the emitter of the transistor. This is the transistor here. And then there's also a capacitor. And this is a... a uh, a resistor, and here's an inductor. So this is kind of a wiggly inductor, and then it comes over here to power. Okay, so we're biasing the input uh, with some inductors and resistors, and we want to bias this transistor up a little bit, and it uses a, a, a diode to do that. So the, this is the diode to ground. I have too many lines here. Um, so this is a, a, a diode to ground here. And so the power coming in creates a 0.7 volt reference right here. And so we're biasing this emitter up 0.7 volts. So we're, we're right at the threshold of it turning on. So you don't have to overcome the burden of the, uh, uh, the base emitter junction. So that's what this, uh, that's what this diode does. And you want to uh, not have it in any RF path, so you put an inductor in here. These wiggly lines on the PC board or, or the substrate. This is a uh, beryllium something, right? Beryllium oxide substrate. Uh, yeah, don't 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 breathe this stuff. It's toxic. <laughs> um, but one of the interesting things here are these capacitors. Okay, this capacitor here and this capacitor here. There's really no place to actually solder it down. You get a choice. You can slide it down, you can slide it up, you can slide this one down, you can slide it up. So you can actually tune this thing when you're manufacturing it. You can actually adjust adjust the inductance levels by sliding the capacitor up and down. You're lengthening or shortening the inductor. So you can actually tune the input of this thing. That, so that's pretty cool. All right. So uh, then we have the, the first drive NPN transistor, and this is the collector. You need to have an, an inductor to plus 13.8 volts to make it work right, okay? And so that's the inductor here, okay? And here's 13 volts, okay? So that's how that's done. Then the output of the first stage goes through an inductor. And then here's a, another tunable section, so you can tune this inductor. You can move this capacitor up and down. And then it runs around here and it goes into the emitter of the second transistor. Okay. So that's, so that's pretty cool. I really like the way that you can adjust these things here in production. Now they also want to um, have a, a DC path to ground here in the, uh, on this collect on this uh, base. And that's being done here with this, uh, um, inductor here to ground. All right, so that's what that's all about. All right, so let's take a look at the final stage then. Okay, so we left off with uh, us getting to this final transistor. We were here. 
So now we're going to go through this final transistor, and uh, it also needs to have an inductor to um, plus 13.8 volts. Um, but we're now outputting quite a few watts now, up to up to 50 watts. So the inductor is this chunky thing here. So this is this is the inductor here uh, to uh, to go to the emitter, and it also has a, a capacitor to ground here. And then the output then goes through a low pass filter. And this is the path it takes, and then it goes out. So this is the output. So the um, low pass filter is a capacitor to ground, a little bit of inductance, capacitor to ground, a little bit of inductance, capacitor to ground, an inductor in series, capacitor to ground, and then a capacitor in series, and then out. So that's that's that section there. All right. Anyway, looks real pretty. <laughs> looks pretty cool. Somebody really knew what they were doing. Look at this transistor. Look at how many bond wires are on that transistor because this thing is outputting 50 watts. So these little uh, hair-like uh, wire bonds, you need a whole bunch of them to share the current, and that's why there's a that's why there's that's why there's so many in here. So it's a, a pretty impressive uh, pretty impressive transistor.